12 common electrical mistakes that homeowners make. Let's get into it. Forgetting to use GFI outlets, GFCI outlets, ground fault circuit interrupter. They are safety outlets required in kitchen countertops, bathrooms, garages, exteriors, and unfinished basements. Use GFI safety outlets. Cutting wires too shortly. When you're working on an outlet or a light switch, the length of the wires is very important. You are required to have at least six inches in front of the box. In front of the box protruding out, you are required to have at least six inches so you can work safely and replace your outlets and lights with you. Using the wrong wire size. Wire size correct thickness is important for safety. The white Romex wire you see at the home improvement stores is size 14 gauge and is for 15 amp circuits. The larger yellow wiring is 12 gauge. It's thicker even though it's a lower number and it's for 20 amp circuits. Using the correct wire consistently is what's required for a safe house. Forgetting to use wire strippers. When you're working off electrical wiring, you'll get to the inside pieces and you need to pull back that insulated sheathing. Some people will look for any kind of knives or whatever they can find and you will cut and damage the wire. It's always best to use wire strippers dedicated for that task. This is an inexpensive wire stripper but will still work and this is a client professional grade wire stripper. Clean and smooth, no damage to the wire. Incorrectly using electrical caps. Some homeowners will mix match the wires and they won't get a good snug fit on the electrical caps. There are newer options out there that are excellent for the do-it-yourselfers the first time. These are an example of push connectors where you literally just push the wire in and it will form a tight bond to your other wires. Or they have these updated lever lock Wago connectors. You simply open the levers and what's happening is it loosens up the opening there you insert your wire, clamp it down, and it is tight, and then you would connect to your next wire and continue on that way. These come in two all the way up to five configurations. They are safety UL rated, and they make working on electrical circuits a lot easier. Connecting to the wrong side of an outlet. When you look at your outlet, they're polarized. One side is larger than the other. The larger size is the neutral. The thinner side is the hot. So your black hot wire always goes to the gold colored screw and your white neutral always goes to the silver colored screw. It is required to have that polarity correct, otherwise you'll have a defective outlet and always connect the ground if available to the green screw provider. Forgetting to use tamper resistant outlets. Tamper resistant outlets or TR. TR outlet stands for tamper resistant. They are required for safety and children protection. Now if you're shop shopping at the inexpensive locations in the stores, the first few outlets uh, below a few dollars will likely not be tamper resistant. You will not see that TR mark on there and technically they don't meet code to install in your home. TR required outlets are now required for safety. Not having enough smoke detectors. Smoke detectors are required in every bedroom and every level of the house. This happens to be an electric smoke detector with a battery backup in case you lose power. That's the best option. However, 10-year lithium battery smoke detectors are a good option too. Just remember, each location is a bedroom and every single level of the house. Forgetting to use an outlet tester. After you've installed a new outlet, always check it with electrical testers or go back and check your existing outlets. They will tell you the correct configuration of your outlet and if it's wired correctly. This model will show you correct polarity, open or missing grounds, open or missing neutrals and hots. Installing outlets too high or too low. The correct placement for outlet box height is approximately between 12 and 15 inches to the bottom of the box for your electrical. If you're nailing in a new work box and you don't have a tape measure handy for that placement, you can simply use the length of the hammer. Put that work box right underneath the length of a standard framing hammer and you will be right on for the perfect height. The height of your electrical outlet boxes should be between 12 and 15 inches from the height of the floor. Sizing circuit breakers correctly. Now circuit breakers have to be sized to the wire. Also keep in mind what they're really protecting is the wire in the house, not the individual. You can still get shocked on a circuit breaker protected circuit. It is protecting the wire in case of overload so the wire will not have too much amperage electricity pushing through it and it will not damage the wire or start a house fire. Always size your circuit breakers correctly. Forgetting to check your electrical circuits before working on them. Everybody knows you need to turn off your circuit breakers or fuses before working on electric but also remember to double check before touching or working on electric circuits that circuit is still live and if you don't trust your non-voltage contact you can use more than one to verify the results. 
not putting enough wire fasteners or staples in. When you're installing a new electric box, whether it be a switch or light box or junction box, anything like that, you are required to have a wire staple within 12 inches of all boxes and then two up the wall on the stud. And then on your long runs, you can go as far as apart as four and a half feet, but don't forget the wire staple. Not having your grounds and neutrals isolated in a sub panel box. In your main panel boxes, when you look on the interior, your neutrals and your grounds are always bonded together. Now check this out. In sub panel boxes, they're always required to be separated. Here in the back of the panel, you can see the copper ground wires are isolated over there all by themselves. And the neutral wires are over here separated all by themselves. They are split and isolated because this is a sub panel box and that's required for safety different than the main panel box. Even though I'm a licensed contractor, I do encourage you guys to learn your own electrical work and be competent enough to do this work yourself. Hey, you got this. You can do this. I bet you can do it yourself.